Morning everyone, welcome back to Brave Men Died here. Today we're going to look at another English battlefield, this time in Staffordshire, uh, and we're going back to the 17th century, to the year of 1643. So in March 1643, the English Civil War, the first one anyway, uh, was about eight months old. Uh, the first major battle of the war had taken place at Edge Hill, uh, and it, it was early days in terms of who was in the ascendant. Um, up here in Staffordshire, the Parliamentarians and the Royalists were vying for control. Uh, and just to give you an orientation to, to where we are, uh, we're, we're on the edge of this field. And if we look across it, beyond that wood there, you've got the main road uh, which runs between you, Toxeter, and Stafford Town itself. Uh, and just over there, slightly to the northeast, about a mile and a half, uh, we drop off this ridge down into the, uh, the, the Trent Valley. So that's the main road from the northeast into Stafford. Uh, back in uh, 1643, the situation in Staffordshire was as follows. Lichfield had just been captured by the parliamentarians, uh, by a, a parliamentarian commander, Sir John Gell, um, and he had uh, spoken to another local commander up in Cheshire from the parliamentarian cause uh, and decided that they were going to link up and capture Stafford. Uh, that parliamentarian commander in Cheshire was Sir William Brereton, uh, and they arranged to meet here uh, at a place called Hopton Heath. Um, on the, the 19th of March 1643. Now it lies about four miles northeast from the town centre of Stafford. It's on a high ridge just as you come up from the Trent Valley and the idea was to rendezvous here and then follow the road down into Stafford and take it for Parliament. Um, Stafford at that time was quite a strategically useful place. Uh, it was on the road between uh, the Yorkshire pipeline where they brought all the arms in through Scarborough, through York, and then down through the Midlands and eventually to Oxford, to the King's Army. Uh, so for the Royalists, it was a useful stop off in that pipeline. Uh, and the parliamentarians were determined to interrupt it and capture Stafford. So that was a kind of strategic situation at the time. Uh, anyway, sure enough, on the 19th of March, uh, the parliamentarians start to assemble just up here on this ridge behind the hedgerow. We'll take a look at it in a moment. We'll get a better view of, of where they formed up. Um, down in Stafford, the day before, uh, a Royalist force had arrived. Uh, that was led by the Earl of Northampton. He'd been sent from Oxford by the King to take control of the Midlands, and he'd got there the day before the Parliamentarians. He'd linked up with another Royalist commander, uh, Henry Hastings at Tamworth, uh, who was in charge of the local Royalists, and together they ensconced themselves down in the town itself. Now, on the morning of the 19th, in the town centre in Stafford, you had most of the Royalist horse, the cavalry, as we often call them, um, and the Royalist artillery. Uh, the infantry that they did have was scattered in the outlying villages. So when the alarm was raised that the parliamentarians had assembled here on Hopton Heath, the Royalists came straight out to do battle, but they came primarily with their, their horse, their cavalry, and their dragoons and their guns, with only a handful of infantry to protect the cannon, because the infantry was still spread out in the outlying villages. Now, if we just turn the camera this way, southwest, uh, you'll see at the bottom of this field that large Ministry of Defence compound there. Uh, sadly, that was built right smack bang in the middle of the battlefield. Uh, that occupies, occupies the space where the Royalist Army formed up. So if you look straight down the side of the field to the corner of the compound, that's pretty much the left wing of where the Royalists were formed up, with maybe some of their dragoons pushed into that next field over on the right as we look at it. And then the Royalist horse, about 800 of them, were formed up right across the front of where the compound is, along with their artillery. Their artillery included a demi cannon, uh, which was known as Roaring Meg, a 29 pounder, and that was to do some significant damage to the parliamentarians during the battle. We've also got at the other side of the field, if we just look that way, uh, this large wood, which wasn't present during the battle. Uh, that's a recent addition. This was all an open heath. Um, and at the far side of that, we had the Royalist right of the line, and they had more dragoons at the far side over by the main road between Stafford and New Toxeter. Uh, so that's where the Royalists were formed up. Uh, where we've got this hedgerow now, if you look along the hedgerow, uh, and just at the other side of it on the ridge, which again, we'll go and take a look at in a moment, um, that was pretty much open heathland, but there were enclosures, stone walls and hedges uh, which the parliamentarians occupied to fortify their position. They would brought with them about 300 horse and about 800 infantry, or the foot as they called them. They also had two or 300 dragoons as well. 
Um, so they formed up along the top of that ridge using the hedges and the walls as best as they possibly could. This field as well wasn't given over to crops, it was raw heathland uh, and various accounts of the battle say that it was absolutely pitted with rabbit warrens which made it very difficult for horses to traverse at speed. And that's quite important when you consider what happened in the battle. So what we'll do in a minute is we'll just change position slightly so we can look beyond this hedge up on the ridge and we'll just take a quick look at the parliamentarian positions. Okay, so we're just a little bit higher up now so we can see over the hedge and we're looking up at that ridge line there. Um, <clears throat> so this is the northeastern edge of the battlefield and over that ridge uh, it drops away quite sharply into the Trent Valley. That's where the parliamentarian army uh, approach from. You can just see a, a farmhouse up there on the top of the ridge. That pretty much marks the centre of the parliamentarian position. Along the top of that ridge there, all the parliamentarian infantry was formed up along with their cavalry uh, and their guns. Uh, they'd brought quite a few with them there from the Siege of Litchfield. Uh, and then where we're actually standing here, if I just pan the camera around, uh, we come into this little back lane which has got quite a, a, a modern wood surrounding it. Um, this is actually where the, the parliamentarian dragoons formed up on, on the parliamentarian right. There were trees here on the day, but it wasn't quite as much a formed wood as it is now. Um, and they were in quite an advantageous position, stood up on the high ground there, uh, protected by the slope of the hill and the rabbit warrens and the various um, fences and hedges and walls. Uh, and then down there, across the open ground, you've got the royalists formed up. Uh, and as we said earlier, primarily a force uh, consisting of cavalry and dragoons. Okay, so let's just chat through the battle itself. It was a pretty straightforward affair. Um, it never really started until about two, three o'clock in the afternoon. It took until about two o'clock for the parliamentarians to be fully formed up there uh, and rendezvous, uh, and about and, until three o'clock before the royalists were, were properly formed up down there on the lower ground. Um, the, the royalists were pretty aggressive. Uh, they came looking for a fight. They weren't prepared to sit there and wait for the parliamentarians to take the initiative. Uh, and they opened the battle with quite a furious bombardment. Uh, and it said that Roaring Meg, with her very first shot, um, put a cannonball straight through the ranks of the parliamentarian infantry uh, and took the heads off about eight parliamentarian soldiers, which caused some consternation amongst the ranks. Uh, and an artillery barrage, a, a duel between the, the guns from both sides, took place for a number of minutes. Um, shortly after that, uh, the, the dragoons began to advance, the royalist dragoons pushed forward up the hill on both flanks, were actually standing right in the middle of the area where the dragoons would have started to skirmish forward against the parliamentarian dragoons, uh, and the same would have been happening on the far side of that wood on the main road between Utopster and Stafford. Uh, so the, the flanks began to engage each other straight away. And not long after this, uh, the, main part, uh, sorry, sorry, the main royalist assault uh, began. Uh, remember, the Royalist force was virtually all horse, all cavalry, uh, not very many infantry at all, just a few infantry stood with the guns. Uh, and so the Royalists came charging across this field, up the slope, towards the Parliamentarian centre. Uh, they very quickly pushed back the Parliamentarian horse, which they outnumbered by about two to one. Uh, and then at the very top of the hill, they washed up against the Parliamentarian foot. Uh, about seven, eight hundred infantry, uh, a mix of pike and muskets, formed up on block, well protected by hedges. Uh, and because of that, and possibly slowed by the slope of the hill and all of the, the rabbit warrens that littered the field, <coughs> the impetus wasn't really there, and they weren't able to, to do much damage, and the parliamentarian foot held the centre quite nicely. The, the royalist horse withdrew for a little bit, gathered their strength, and then they went in again. And this second time, uh, they managed to push the parliamentarian horse completely off the hill, uh, and they started to push slowly the parliamentarian infantry back and managed to capture a number of parliamentarian cannon. Uh, the problem here, however, is that the, the Earl of Northampton, leading the charge uh, in typical Royalist commander fashion, pushed his way into the ranks of the parliamentarians and was brought down. He was brought off his horse. Um, he was asked to surrender but refused to take quarter uh, and was killed amongst his enemies. Uh, this took the wind out of the Royalist attack and again, it, it fell back down the hill slightly, uh, and then accounts vary. Some say there were only two Royalist cavalry attacks, some say three. But what we know is after the Earl of Northampton was killed, the Royalists went back in again. Uh, there was another sort of melee, 
uh, the parliamentarian infantry was pushed back further up, right onto the very top of the ridge, almost to the point where they were going to get pushed back down into the Trent Valley. Uh, but again, despite the fact that the parliamentarian horse had left the field by now, uh, the dragoons on both flanks had, had pretty much been pushed back, that, that infantry up on the top of the hill were absolutely dogged. They, they, they stayed put, they were going to be pushed off the hill completely, and they managed to push the royalists back again. So as dusk settled, what we had was up on the hill, the remnants of the parliamentarian army, mainly the foot, still holding out uh, amongst that network of hedges and walls. Uh, the Royalist cavalry fallen back down now to the bottom end of the field to regroup, pretty much exhausted and blown after multiple cavalry charges. They'd lost their most senior commander, the Earl of Northampton. So Henry Hastings uh, was now the most senior royal in charge. And that was pretty much the situation as night fell. Come the morning of the next day, uh, it was discovered that the parliamentarians had left the field. Um, they'd actually split again. <clears throat> the cavalry from Sir William Brereton's group, they'd headed back in towards Cheshire, uh, and Sir John Gell had taken his troops northeast towards Utoxeter and thence to Derby. So they'd given up the field the next day. The Royalists were still here, expecting to fight again, but found themselves in possession of the field and also still in possession of a number of parliamentarian guns that they'd captured earlier. Now, as a result of the way the battle ended, uh, both sides claimed victory. The parliamentarians said, well, we were still there at the end of the day. You never pushed us off the hill. It was our victory. The royalists, of course, claimed it was a victory because the parliamentarians had dispersed the following day and Stafford still remained in royalist hands uh, and they were still in possession of the field. Uh, realistically, it had cost the, the royalists quite dearly uh, in terms of senior people. They'd lost the Earl of Northampton, quite a significant personality. Uh, their, their physical casualties were relatively light. Uh, many sources say only around 50 casualties on the royalist side. The parliamentarians, they still had their two commanders. Uh, their two forces were still intact, but they had taken a number of casualties, <coughs> several hundred uh, injured and killed and of course they'd lost a number of guns as well and they they kind of lost face I suppose because they'd had to uh, abandon their objective of capturing Stafford uh, and, and go their separate ways. So very mixed reviews depending on which side you, you fall down on. Um, pretty typical of most English Civil War battles certainly in the early days. Relatively small numbers, just a couple of thousand people, quite often local forces and a very indecisive conclusion to the engagement. What we'll do in a minute then is we'll pop back down to the bottom of the field and we'll go take a look at the battlefield memorials and then we'll look at a couple of other viewpoints including one at the far side of the battlefield just to give you an idea of where you can come and get a good view of the battlefield if you ever visit. Okay, we're standing by the corner of the Ministry of Defence compound because this is where the memorial to the battlefield is. See the memorial there just in the uh, bottom left hand corner of the camera and next to it you've got this uh, useful information board which gives you some detail about the battle. Uh, it's actually behind the wire, um, so uh, you just need to get close to it if you want to have a, a good read of it. Uh, but that's the official memorial to the battlefield. You get to this using this public footpath, uh, which is quite well beaten. You follow it down the side of the compound there. That goes through a couple of metal gates. It's signposted as well as a public right of way. And then it takes you onto the back road into Hopton Village. Uh, and that's where we part this morning. Uh, just in a little cul-de-sac and then walked up the road. Uh, there's a couple of areas of verge where you could possibly park uh, in order to walk up this path and, and find the memorial. <clears throat> this is a nice little viewpoint actually because if you stand here by the memorial, uh, if you look up the hill there, uh, you can see uh, quite a good view of the left-hand side of the battlefield. You can see that far more clearly in the ridge line where the parliamentarian infantry and horse were formed up. Uh, and the main field across which the Royalist Cavalry Charges took place. Uh, and then if we just pan slightly left, all this area here by this, this field on the left and those trees in the distance, that's the area where the skirmishing took place between the various uh, Dragoon units on the, the Royalist and the Parliamentarian side. So it's quite a nice spot to see this side of the battlefield. And as we said before, uh, just at the other side of those trees in this compound, you've got the main road from Utox to Stafford which is the right-hand side of the battlefield. Uh, and we'll just pop around there in a moment and have a quick look, just so you can get an idea of the view from that side. OK, so we're now at the far side of the battlefield, and this is the main road that I mentioned to you earlier on. So you'll have to excuse any background noise that suddenly occurs, because it is quite busy. 
Uh, it's early in the morning, but no doubt there'll be some rush hour traffic coming past shortly. Um, so this is the side of the battlefield, again, where we had the skirmishing between various groups of dragoons. You can see the MOD compound and the wood there from this side. Uh, that's where the, the Royalists formed up. Down the bottom end of that road there, about three miles distant, is the, the town of Stafford. Uh, and then up here on the high ground, you can see uh, that farm complex there and the trees on the ridge. That's where the parliamentarians formed up uh, and the road goes down into the Trent Valley all the way to Utoxeter. Uh, and so these fields in front of us here, this is where all the action took place up on that ridge there. So it's just another, another view of the battlefield from this side. Uh, the useful thing is you can park here. There's a big lay-by, uh, so it's great for access. Uh, so if you're not planning to, to video or record anything, it's a great spot. OK, so that brings us to the end of this short tour of the battlefield of Hopton Heath, uh, which took place on the 19th of March, 1643. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little look around. Uh, it, it's pretty typical of most English battlefields, I think, particularly of this period, but in general. Uh, here in the UK, we, we, we're, we're spoilt for battlefields. They're everywhere. Uh, we've got a very rich history of conflict uh, over a couple of thousand years. And, and so you, you literally trip over a battlefield everywhere you go. The, the thing about battlefields in the UK is they're generally not very well advertised. Uh, that they're, they're quite subtle in the way they are marked. So quite often you could be walking through the countryside or driving along a road and going through the scene of a major action where thousands of men fought and died, uh, you know, years before, centuries before, and not even realise it. And Hopton Heath is one of those. Uh, that road which uh, we, we've seen is, is very busy uh, and people go along it all day long between Utoxeter and Stafford uh, and they drive past this battlefield, through the battlefield really, uh, without realising what's around them. And it's only if you just come off the beaten track and have a look around, you get a feel for the ground and what happened here. Uh, but but that, that's the nature of battlefields, I suppose. They tend to get forgotten um, and uh, that they, they, they just sort of fade into history. Uh, and, and that's what makes them so special, I think, in the UK, is that they're very unspoilt. They tend not to get built on generally. This is a bit of an exception. The MOD put their big compound here, uh, but generally they're in quiet little out of the way places that you can walk around not see any other people they're not a massive tourist trails and that gives you a chance to sort of stand here quietly and just take in the scene uh, and get in your mind's eye the action uh, and understand what happened here many years before anyway thanks for watching uh, if, if you enjoy these videos please do take a look at the rest of the channel subscribe so you don't miss any new content um, if you've enjoyed the video please give it a like that would be great uh, and we'll see you next time on brave men died here take care